I built my own Puppet Up arcade pads from plywood and 3D printed parts and they work really well. If you've got a 3D printer, this whole thing costs just about 130 euros. Let me show you how I made it. A year ago, the only Pump It Up machine in Lisbon broke and it's still not fixed. So, for its one year death anniversary, I decided to build my own. The project naturally split into five parts. Wooden frame, sensors, microcontroller, button mounts and final improvements. I came across a project from someone who had already built exactly what I wanted to make. His blog is linked in the description. He shared all of his CAD files and notes so I used them as a starting point for my own version. First, I needed a frame. Unlike Rodrigo, I needed two pads and I needed them as cheap as possible. To keep the costs down, I decided to cut the entire frame and all of the buttons from a single sheet of plywood. The biggest sheet I could find still wasn't enough. I used an online cutting tool that automatically made the most efficient layout, but the part still didn't fit. So I had to compromise. I removed the border and reduced the base size by 2 cm on each side. I didn't have much woodworking experience, so mistakes were bound to happen. I forgot about the saw widths and even made a mistake in few numbers. On the first day, the shop rejected my cutting plan. On the second day, their saw was broken. On the third day, they only did half the cuts. And on the fourth day, I realized that I was the problem. I'd written 355mm instead of 335 they trimmed off those two extra centimeters to fix it. And funny enough, the leftover pieces turned out perfect for the middle layer of the pads. After finally bringing everything back to the office, I started putting it all together. Bit by bit, I glued and trimmed the parts and it was super satisfying watching it take shape. The frame actually started to look like a real pad. I even borrowed a saw from friends and cut the leftover pieces right there in the office before doing the everything up. Now for the most important part, the sensors. During my 4-day Leroy Merlin adventure, I didn't waste any time. I had a few ideas for the sensor design, but I wasn't quite sure how to make them work. And once again, Rodrigo saved the day. I 3D printed his sensor design, and I actually liked it a lot. Why reinvent the wheel when there are such awesome people in the community? I grabbed some aluminum tape and gave it a test. It was so satisfying to watch the multimeter beep when the two parts touched. I spent some time figuring out how to connect the JST male connector wires to the sensor. I first tried sticking the wires under the tape, but the adhesive wasn't conductive. I also considered soldering, but aluminum isn't really great for that. Eventually, I used the holes as intended, passed the cables through, bent them, and then folded the non-adhesive part of the aluminum tape over the top. I made four sensors and soldered four female connectors together in a chain to create one fully working button. By that time, the glue on the pads had dried, so I could finally start testing. After that first successful test, I had a full-on marathon ahead. Printing parts, cutting and sticking aluminum tape, punching holes, threading wires, bending and soldering everything together. After assembling everything and simply placing the buttons on top of the sensors, not even fixed yet, everything seemed to work. At least that's what the multimeter said. Time to finally program the microcontroller. For the controller, I went with an ESP32. I've got a bunch of them lying around for different projects. If you are planning to build one yourself, an Arduino Pro Micro would work great too. I used ChatGPT and the Arduino IDE to program the microcontroller. It took ages to debug, and in the end it only worked as a keyboard. I really wanted it to act as a gamepad. The funny part? When I built the second pad later, I got it working perfectly with the free version of Claude, just in 5 minutes. So, here is my first major success. Next up, the buttons. And honestly, this part broke me. These buttons took me more time than the entire rest of the build combined. Here's a very condensed list of the chaos I went through, just to make them work. I printed a corner chip with a 6mm drill guide, then reprinted it, because of course I messed up the offset. Designed and printed the nut holder. I eyeballed the alignment and of course it didn't line up at all. Tried making the holes by smacking the button so the bolts would leave a print. Somehow it didn't work. 
they were way off. So I designed the first version of the stencil that works together with the sensors, which meant I had to unscrew and realign the sensors. And when I put them back, they didn't work. I modified Rodrigo's design to fit self-tapping screws. Rage deleted 40 old sensors and printed 40 new ones. Then I swapped the drill bit from 6mm to 9mm for more clearance. Printed version 2 of the stencil, the one used for both the frame and the buttons. Unscrewed everything again, marked the button holes, drilled all of them. Perfectly aligned this time. After that I finally assembled both pads and reprogrammed the microcontroller. This time using plot. Everything worked, but these pads still have a few issues. The corner buttons have way too much travel. When you stepped on them, they moved around and completely threw off balance. The whole frame slid across the floor way too easily. In my current design, the buttons are sticking above the frame. They should be slightly below. There were two separate frames, but I wanted them locked together. The microcontroller wiring looked like spaghetti, and it wasn't even attached to the frame. And finally, the pads weren't really portable. I wanted them to be a single unit that you could lift, fold and store easily. If you think that fixing all of that meant redoing literally everything, congratulations, grab yourself a cookie. The first thing I did was print some round pads out of TPU. I screwed a bunch of them evenly across the bottom. It helped, but they slipped a bit. So I put that problem aside and started fixing the issue with the corner buttons moving around. I made a simple bracket to keep the button from traveling too far and I added a hole at the bottom to attach a TPU non-slip pads. I mounted four of these brackets on each corner button. And that's how the version you saw at the start of the video was born. After hours of staring at the pads I finally had a breakthrough. I realized I could reuse and modify the existing brackets to hold the microcontroller between the pads and connect them with hinges. That way they'd stay locked together and fold up easily for storage. Two birds, one print. At first I only used two hinges, but they broke almost immediately. The short screws just couldn't hold them. So I upgraded the design to four hinges. One of them ended exactly where the microcontroller used to be, so I moved the microcontroller to another side of the same corner. By this point I had already broken three nut holders, so it was clearly time for a full redesign. Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. The previous nut holders failed because of the print orientation. They cracked easily along the layer lines. Since the brackets were printed sideways, merging them with the nut holders was the obvious solution. It would fix that problem and make everything stronger. During a trip to Leroy Merlin to get longer screws, I stumbled upon a 15mm wooden dowel. That's when it hit me. It would make perfect handles. By the end, I had 9 different nut holder types. To handle the button height, I needed to make the sensor thinner, so I finally made my own one-piece design. When I went to reassemble everything, I faced the same problem again. Alignment. I thought I had calculated everything during design, but apparently not. After a fair bit of cursing and adjusting the brackets, I finally managed to assemble everything together, and this is my final design. Right after this recording, I organized a small party with my team to celebrate completion of this project and to stress test the pads. I hope you enjoyed my journey, like, subscribe, and if you want to build your own version, please comment.